Quando sei lontana e sogno all'orizzonte manca le parole You don't know French? Hello and welcome to the NRL Noise, a podcast hosted by me, Ian Webster, and him, Ben Freeman. On this show, we will talk all things sport, mainly rugby league, and we'll very, very rarely stay on topic. Expect us to go off track at every opportunity, and if you have sensitive little ears, you should probably tune out now. Don't forget to subscribe via iTunes and Spotify. Leave us a five-star review to help us climb those charts in the visibility proceeds. Enjoy the show. You don't know drag. Characters of the they show. They don't like it. They Stop. fucking love it. <sighs> Welcome back. Yeah, welcome back. Now, I've got a bone to pick with you. Already? Yeah. That didn't take long. So, <laughs> so we've had a, some good feedback, and you're going to read one out in a minute, but mm. we've had some good feedback on the show over the first three weeks, and uh, word on the town is you've been walking around like Charlie Potato. Big Char- celebrity. Charlie Potato. Yeah, big time Charlie Potato. Is that right? Yeah. Mm. And they even got rumour this morning that you've had some unnecessary attention on social media platforms have i is this true uh, is there possible. any truth with truth deny my uh, my social media skills yeah. don't allow me to check that but yeah anyway <laughs> <laughs> yeah. fill me in brother you had fill me in sliding into your dms and you know, sending in <laughs> yeah, random requests been, actually I'm, i think i'm aware of the topic you're talking about yeah i have been hacked uh, my dad decided to leave a bit of feedback oh. there and uh, was that your dad that was my dad yeah. what did he say he said uh something along the lines of uh he really enjoyed the show, and um, it's the best bit of league commentary he's heard since Shane Warne stopped playing in the front row or something along those lines, I think. There we go. So he's an avid league fan. Loves it, mate. Yeah, he's probably watched about three games of State of Origin in his life, and he would have been dragged to those. How old would Shane Warne have been when he stopped playing? Oh, I don't know, 40. <laughs> Shane Warne? Yeah. Playing rugby league? He never played rugby league. <laughs> <laughs> He's from Victoria. Are we just highlighting your dad's? <laughs> yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, he does. He does not. He does not have any interest. In that. That's brilliant. <laughs> Can we get him on the show? Yes. Where's he from? Where's he living? He's living here. He lives here. Right. Yeah. Do you reckon he'd come on for a chat? No doubt. Just to talk all things rugby league and share his knowledge. Yeah. And mate, yeah. I think the listeners would love that. He'd hold his own. Hold his own. I think so. Oh, mate, we've got to get him on. <laughs> Um, so, with your celebrity status, how many weeks in advance do we have to book you now? Oh, it'd be stretching out, it'd be pushing out to oh, probably three or four days now. Three or four days and uh, <laughs> food on arrival? Always, yep. Always food on arrival? It helps. Uh, what's your favourite food? What would you like on your rider? Is that what they call it? They call it the rider? Do the, they? Uh, the celebrities. And oh, I see. I, think, I, hear, I hear that Mariah Carey, when she turns up, she has to have... 300 oysters on ice. Does she? Yeah. That's a lot of oysters. Only What's... served by white males with spectacles. <laughs> I've got a really bad feeling. I know where this is going. <laughs> no, it's serious. But it can be that. It can be that. Um, Very good be... choice. I'm sure yeah. Dad will agree with that. Maybe we can raise <laughs> that. With... <laughs> <laughs> it can be that thorough. Yeah. Excellent. Well, well, what, what was his... Uh, do, you wanna, do you want to give him a shout out? What was his, um, what was his message? Well... I got a message on social media that I could handle because one of one of my good friends sent it in, and he actually rang me with it on the phone because he didn't know how to leave the feedback. So it was right up my alley. But David Pierce, his name was, and Pierce has he's probably one of our biggest fans. He's digested all three episodes, so that's a good effort. Wow. Yep. There and go. yeah, and liked it. He admitted to enjoying it. So that was good. And he had a question for you actually, Webby. Yeah, go on. And I wasn't going to read it out because it was. Um, Something that I feel like you already uh, dismissed me on. But anyway, I thought we'll give it a go. Go on. I had a question for you. He said, would Queensland benefit from moving Munster to fullback and Ponga to the 14 jersey so he could come off the bench? But Well, that's it's it's a null and void question now. But... Because Ponga's out. But he was, uh, at the time, it was on Saturday Arvo, and he, he asked me about that, and he thought that there would be... Because Ponga was so good off the bench last year. And, um, yeah, also thinks Munster's best... For, position is full back so he yeah i think sort of run it by you um because it's probably more valid now with what's happened mm. with ponger out you actually have to consider your answer because they're actually going to do that now they're going to muck around with that full back spot and who yeah. do you think is going to go there um i don't think they'll play a traditional full back style now like mm. like we touched on at the end of last week um 
if they can have a couple of fullbacks striking, uh, fullbacks striking on one side and a couple of forwards striking on the other side and let the halves play between, mm. you can have Cameron Munster playing out the back on the left, just as a six, and Corey Norman with him. Mm-hmm. And then you could have your seven, whether it's Morgan, Cherry Evans. Uh, you can have them up in the middle playing both sides of the field <clears throat> and being the link between the hooker yep. and the backs or the hooker and the forwards. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the biggest thing for Cherry Evans is... Um, not overplaying his hands, so not being involved in every every play, yeah. letting the backs play when they need to play and letting the forwards play when they need to play. That's what that's what I believe. Yeah. Um, with Ponga being out, I think that's a massive. And just for Pearcey, for for his sake, what do you what do you think of the utility thing for Ponga if he was if he wasn't ruled it out w- with injury? It wouldn't hurt him going back to the bench because he's still young. Uh, it would it would hurt him less going to the bench and coming on and killing a game. Mm than it would go into six and having a dreadful, shitty game. Mm. That would kill him. Yep. Um, in the short term, anyway. I think he's a resilient lad. I think he'll... Whatever he kind of gets put in front of him at the moment, he'll overcome. He's he's riding a wave, so... Um, yep. But you don't want to stop that momentum either. He's only a kid. He's yep. only 20 years old, I think. Yeah, I think um, the other side of that story also is that he's he's probably the best fullback that Queensland have got also, so... It's hard to, hard to not want to get eighty minutes out of him. That was that was what I thought. What I think New South Wales did in the first game, um, and what they did best, they just picked their best players. Yeah, and they then picked found the best a position. seventeen footballers, and then worked it out from there. Yeah, and then found a position from there. So I think Queensland are in that boat now, but running through their uh, running through their roster. Tons yeah, are tough. Well, tons are tough at the middle. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. What was your what what's your background in sport like what did you did you grow up in queensland no yeah you did yeah so yeah. how new south wales i was born in canberra moved to sydney so what and my brothers both go for both go for new south wales so i always grew up just um yeah sticking with your barrack for who where you were born oh right so it's it's a where you were born thing. oh well, what, what age did for you move a supporter, to queensland? i guess i mean i know with rugby league it's uh, wherever you play your first first grade side but you know mm. with, with a supporter thing like it's just whatever's in the family i think yeah I don't agree with that, actually. I think it should be where you're born, even for a player. It's, yeah. it's easier to resonate back where you're born. Yep. Um, so why why the Tigers then? <laughs> what word did that come from? There must well, be a story behind that. Is it a family thing? Because you just said your dad didn't follow rugby league. No, he didn't. So it's not like a hereditary pass down. I, I, love, I love that you uh, want me to explain why I go for the Tigers. <laughs> well, so the reason I ask is I, I've looked through certain generations and you've got a generation there that follows the dragons from their success um, yep. late 60s 70s 80s and then there's your Malmeninga Raiders kind of tradition because Queensland didn't have the team to nail the hat on from Queensland they yep. they picked kind of the one that was being every Friday night on TV <laughs> but that wasn't the Tigers they didn't come good until when was the Benji Marshall flick pass to pass? Oh yeah, well hang on. Before that, okay. I think, I think this is probably you're just showing that you're still a pup there, Webby. Because yep. when uh, when I was growing up, and this is probably a walking contradiction because I was Ball starved. Main. I was starved right. for uh, <clears throat> options. We had RTQ Seven and ABC up here to pick from on TV. Yeah, and the games that we got to see were the games of the most successful clubs. And in the late '80s, when I sort of took a shine to rugby league. Uh, Canberra and Balmain were the two top sides. And in the Balmain side, there was a good percentage of that where the New South Wales representatives we had Gary Jack as a full Hillary back, Benny Elias, Wayne Pierce, Ellery Hanley played the in Black that Black Pearl. Team. He did. Yep. He, coached us, uh, he coached our rep team in 2003. Steve Roach. Yep. Wow. Yeah, so they had, a, they had a stack side and they were good to watch. And, yeah, it was something that I... Yeah, just all and Benny Elias was my favourite player growing yep. up because he stuck it into Queensland pretty good. So you was a Balmain fan, but then when the merger happened, it was just natural choice to. Oh, it wasn't. It was pretty upsetting. I didn't. Yeah. Lo- I didn't love the merger with Wes. Uh, what was the story behind that? Because I, I still really don't know. Do you know no, I, what I, the kind of incident was? It money? Was I think it, it was financial. Yeah. And when did it happen around the Super League? Good question. I'm not sure exactly what not year it was. Sure. It was it. It was only a few years before we won the flag in 2005, so it might have been early 2000s. Yeah, yeah right. It's interesting because, yeah, like I said, you tend to go through the the generations here in <clears throat> in Central Queensland, especially where we didn't, we never have had a team, and you you see certain trends where teams, yeah, you're 2,000 people, so you 
millennials or whoever, they tend to be Cowboys, Broncos, more recent history. Melbourne still. Yeah, me- well, Melbourne from 2010 onwards, the kids are tending to go mm. to Melbourne for your Smith, Slater, Cronk. A lot of success. Yeah. Um, and the success that came with it. Um, yep. We go back to the 90s and the 80s. It seems to be a, a very Camera, Canberra Raiders dominated time with your Mal Meningas, yep. uh, all the guys that went down there. And then even back just past that, you kind of get your you die hard dragons fans who are still kicking it now with with yeah. the dragons even after the merger as well with the St George and yep so yeah it's in, it was just interesting i was thinking about it today i was wondering why how yeah because knowing that you went for new south wales i thought there might have been a family tie there or, and and then knowing that your dad didn't follow rugby league no yeah my, yeah so dad's family uh, are from camden so in northern new south wales and that was yeah not not a link to any of the clubs or anything like that but that was yeah our heritage so it was it was still the popularity of being broadcast here but it was as Balmain not as West Tigers yeah correct yeah Balmain wow mm. there you go yeah, yeah. nice history uh, lesson guys yep uh, we will <laughs> it'd be very <laughs> little known history being Tigers <laughs> stuff but anyway we've probably lost a few listeners <laughs> <laughs> so if you uh, just put the phone down then and, and slammed it on the floor we're sorry about that yep um, did you play rugby league as a kid no yeah tennis, tennis. all tennis yep uh, representative level, what competitive? Uh, yeah, coached and yeah, played uh, yeah, almost full time at one one stage. Yeah. Never, never, ever gave rugby league a go. Never thought about it. No, no, yeah, yeah no. It was uh, one of those things. I think one of Mum's good friends in high school had a pretty significant accident. And right. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't something that um, it was on the table for us as kids growing up. But that's all right. So still support it, but it was still played obviously at, played at lunchtime. And, so yeah, yeah, so it was still the social domination. Yeah, that was the sport to be yeah. kind of watching or riffing with your friends about. And yeah. Stuff like that. yeah, yeah, right. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Well, last week we introduced the Goose of the Week award. Uh, Anthony Milford took it without a doubt. Now, I I think it would be easy this week to go with Darius Boyd. <laughs> I want to go picking low hanging fruits. Oh, it's not fair. I mean, come on, the boy. First of all, I think he probably should spend a few weeks in in Queensland Cup with Wynnum. Darius Boyd. Yeah. Okay. Can you do that to him? What's he done? Well, exactly. What's he done for the last six months? He's a captain, don't forget. Well, you're not going to get any argument from me. There's no doubt. My only thing is, when he missed... when he, (laughs) I wouldn't say miss. When he lost that confrontation on on the weekend in the centres... It wasn't through uh, shit tackling ability. It was pure. Uh, he wanted to run over him more than he wanted to tackle the other bloke. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, I missed that match. So now, this is, you're talking about to the Newcastle and Broncos match on the weekend. He was absolutely bowled over. Um, what side did he play? He played on the left side at six, mm-hmm. uh, which I think I, which I think I spoke about it a couple of weeks ago that Milford, they can still rescue their money on Milford, putting him to fullback. Yeah. They just... And, and, I, and I, honestly... From a cultural standpoint for the club, giving Darius a chance, at every chance that you can, is the right thing to do. But how much was the line? How much? Because he wasn't good. In no. fact, probably dreadful is probably a good word. <laughs> and I hate to do it. I hate talking negatively about players because it's shit. It's so shit, especially being a player. And I hearing, guess, yeah. You know, it's, towards it's the natural. end of my career, I went through a similar thing. Yep. It wasn't, I was one foot in, one foot out. Yep. And I get the feeling he's at that position. Doesn't feels feels obliged to be there. Probably getting good money. He's not going to give it away. Yep. He's still got the ability. Doesn't have the desire. And he's followed Wayne around his whole career. So is that is that desire sort of languished since Bennett's gone to South a bit? Yeah. Too, like possibly. Do you think it could be a revival if they just let him go, let him save himself? Possibly. Hmm. Mm. It wasn't good. So anyway, I'm not going to go with Darius for Goose of the Week. So if you have a, a nomination, happy to get into that. I have a nomination. Okay, Str- let's go. This Strong week's Centeno. Goose of the Week. Is George Burgess. George Burgess. It's got to be George. What do you do? He couldn't be a bigger goose. <laughs> what He's goose Don. He's fairly sized goose. <laughs> Probably, probably the only thing that the listeners are thinking is that is the uh, the victim that he picked was probably a popular one to pick on. But George, I don't know if you <laughs> saw on, the incident, but did, yeah, no. well, George made a tackle on Robbie Farrar coming out of their own end there, and um, 
started fishing around in Robbie's skull like it was the last pickled onion in the jar and looking for his eyeballs. <laughs> He's just reaching in further and further and it wasn't, wasn't, uh, wasn't subtle. But, yeah, it sort of got missed and there was no, no sin bin and nothing like that. It was just, yeah, okay, we'll just move on. It's only Robbie. And <laughs> was he penalised? I don't know. I don't think so. Wow. He might have been. Penalized. Has he been cited after the game since? Like, is he is he going to serve a suspension? Is he going to go in front of the judiciary? Well, yeah, he's in strife. So the the, the they're clamping down on it. Yeah. So the the minimum charges and and it didn't get picked up. I think what I was a bit annoyed about was that it didn't get picked up by the cast of thousands that we have officiating <laughs> on rugby league. So we had the two touch judges, the two referees, and the the team in the bunker, and no one sort of went back and and cited it for the, the serious incident that it was. Because it wasn't, you know, I was saying, Jesse, he was <laughs> reaching into Robbie's skull. He really did have a proper go, and he was pushing down on his head into his eye with his with his open hand. So I thought it was a goose of the week contender because it was a, a conscious conscious decision to, to eye gouge. You've got to have... You've got to have a serious brain fart nowadays to go and do something like that because there's 50 HD cameras knocking around. Yeah. Nothing gets missed. And the thing is, you've got 10, 11 ex-legends of the game, players who know the ins and outs of those kind of nuances within a game. Yep. They're going to pick them up with every single TV angle and watching the game, watching the reaction of the player that you're playing with. Yeah. It's, you're never going to get away with anything. Well, and Something else that really... Oh, actually, so go on. George Burgess. Yeah, so we'll finish, George, well, George may have played his last game for the Rabbits because he, it, it, the incident carries a minimum charge of six weeks, I think, mm. for eye gouging. And with his 50% loading for an incident last year, he could get up to nine weeks if he got the minimum. And I think it's going to be a bit more than that. And he's off contract at the end of the season. So it could be George's days done. Wow. Mm. It would be a sad way for him to end that because the family's got a good... Uh, relationship with the bunnies. Um, I agree, but you know, it was it was a conscious decision to do it. So, hey, on, on a completely off off topic, did you ever watch the Sam Burgess documentary, Slamming Sam? No. Wow. Do yourself anybody listening, do yourself a favor and, and go and watch that. It's on YouTube. Um, it's basically a good insight into <clears throat> first of all Sam. And his attitude towards life and football and uh, the struggles that he had with his dad. He passed away with motor neurons disease. Um, and then how he met Russell Crowe. And it just goes through the whole timeline. It's, it'll leave a tear in your eye. Um, and it paints a good picture of the family and how close they are together. Yep. Uh, I used to play against his brother, Luke. Mm-hmm. And every time, so Sam, at that stage, Sam was playing for Great Britain uh, and Bradford. Um Probably Captain Great Britain at that time is when he put the big tackle on Fui Fui Moi Moi that went viral. Oh, yeah. Um, but every time, even when Luke played in the uh, Leeds under-21s game, it was, it was a nothing game Oh, it was compared to what Sam was doing, but the whole family were there. Brother, yep. Every brother, uh, mum, aunties, grandma. Like there was a cast of about 15 of them every single time. It was, right? it, and yeah. you could just tell that they were... Just a close family. There was no ego about him. Great family. So it, it yep. is a shame for George if that's, the, if that's the case. He's a big part of the 2014 grand final as well and, mm. <clears throat> and that, that charge to get there. So it is a shame, but, you know. One of them things, eh? One of those things, yeah. Keep your hands to yourself and yeah, away from Robbie Farah's eyes. He'd, he'd... You've got no friends. Let's go into um, the State of Origin teams, the announcements. Yes. Hot off the press, really. What do you think of the Queensland? So, Caelan Pongi. <laughs> ask, me, <laughs> oh, ask me that question. Uh, you can finish that one. You, what, what, what? Queensland team. <laughs> now, they, <laughs> they, named it, they named it out of position. So, they named it as a... Um, well, you can, you can draw your own conclusions of what the team will be. I believe the team will be Michael Morgan at fullback. Oltsy and Mbai in the centres, uh, Will Chambers and Dane on the other side, Cameron Munster, Cherry Evans, Arthur Hengawe, got to start at prop. Yep. Benny Hunt, I think he deserves to keep his position. Josh Papali, mm-hmm. Felicia Kafusi, Matt Gillette, Josh Iguaya. Yep. Um, Corey Norman, I believe, will be the 14. 
that could be interchangeable actually that could be interchangeable with Michael Morgan at fullback um, Christian Welsh will get a goal I believe he's he's deserved one for a couple of years now yep. Fafida and Glasby kept his place on the 17 okay that's what I believe they'll line up as they didn't name it that way yep any thoughts on that yeah lots of thoughts <laughs> are you shivering lots of yeah oh It'd be the most, I reckon if 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 New South Wales lose this game in Sydney, it would be the lowest point of New South Wales rugby league history. But this is... And and I'm pretty sure I've got a lot of Queensland mates who are reminded of some low points, but I can't see them losing. But I'll tell you what, if anybody could talk the New South Wales Blues out of losing this game, it's your press. Yeah, let's not worry about that. The press in Sydney are brutal on this team. They should be. Well, I don't know. I don't always think it's look. It's I think, needed. I think the thing that's going to combat any negative press is Jimmy Maloney. I don't think he'll read into any of that. And he is now the form half in the competition, regardless of what happened in the first nine rounds for Penrith. Played himself he into form. For an played himself game. into form and talked himself into being the man. But that doesn't, doesn't that just highlight certain mentality of different people? Like, we spoke about him. He's a winner. Out and out winner. Um, the other the other guys that have got into the origin um, fold and just played themselves out of form they've gone the other way yep um, you bring I, and, and I think also the, the the mental approach to sport in general you know uh, Maloney's gone and, and now he's he's flipped that switch and decided that now it's go and and got his opportunity in state of origin and the few weeks leading into it to to put himself into contention at all and I think the Panthers are what on a five or six match winning streak now, mm. and mm. and uh, yeah, add the add the second game to that, and with and he had to do it again without Cleary on the weekend also. So I think you know that's a pretty good indicator that he's the right man for the job at the moment. And he brought them on, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He kicked a field goal and gold, golden point to ice the game, wow. and he had two tries this in, in, throughout the game to get him there in New Zealand. In New Zealand, yeah, oh, and against... with it was a very controversial match. That one, there was two sin bins uh, for Penrith, so they had eleven players on the field for thir- for three minutes, and um, yeah, they were pretty controversial decisions. Apparently, Cleary was seething after the match. If you haven't heard his his uh, post match interview, you should listen. No, I haven't. Mm. Um, there was some. There was some howlers. There was a howler, and apparently one of the New Zealand tries uh, from Fusatua, he clearly had had a hand on the touchline. Uh, is the report? I haven't seen it myself, but that was the report that I read. Wow! Mm. So the referees in a strife again. Yep, right in the spotlight. Oh, well, they're taking us off track there. I think. Um, yeah, I think getting back to what we were talking about with Queensland's problems. Yeah, uh, I I think I would um, go back to. What Pearce he was talking about, actually. I'd put Munster in his best position at fullback. I know he plays six for the Storm, mm. but I'd be having uh, him at uh, him at one and Norman at six and leave Morgo in the centres because he's done a good job there. What? Okay. I was thinking, Norman coming into a team, he doesn't have to be structured because Cherry Evans is there for that. It, I really I think one and six for Queensland are interchangeable. And I do, yeah, I agree that Cameron Munster's probably more dangerous in open play. I so bringing the ball back, he's a lot braver. He'll get into the nitty gritty. He's going to get banged and get back up. He's very difficult to put down. Yeah, one on one, he gets stood up every time. He'll he'll never go to ground. You see him. Mm. He's got an incredibly strong core. He stands through most tackles with three or four players on him. Yep. Um, and that's yeah. why I think I think Queensland need that. I mean, you got to think this is a a one match situation. It's do or die. It's not. Cameron Munster being the best six or the best one, it's let's put the best winning opportunity we got on the field. And I think Cameron offers that from the back. He can play both sides of the field. It doesn't change what he does a lot at six. I think you're mm. right about that. It's not going to change the game plan a lot, but it just allows him to follow through and do what he needs to do from the back. And I think he adds a bit more than the others do at one. Was there any uh, force changes for New South Wales that you could see on the weekend? Clemmer's Cl- been dropped, and I don't think that was forced. Um, is there any insight to that? Is there any uh, breaking news or any kind of innuendo surrounding what that decision would have been? No, I'm not sure. From all reports, he had a really big game on the weekend, so it was just a, a choice not to change the winning formula from game two. Who would be your ideal props to start game three? If you had Magic Wand, here, Ben, you pick our props. This is Queensland team, given what you know now. 
go and pick yourself two props that you believe we can win this game with. For Queensland? No, for New South Wales. For New South Wales. Well, I would have, Clement would have been the first one picked for me. Really? Why? He's just had been there and done that. He's played test level. He's played origin. He's been in grand finals. He's And he's just a big, strong body. And he goes, you get good value for, for him. He goes for as long as you need him to. So, and just to maybe counter that... Um, size that the Queensland pack have that's probably one thing that they do have is some bigger bodies out there mm. so yeah I would think he would have been the first one picked but you know um, and alongside him would have been Jake Trebojevic for me I would have had at prop at prop yep Just so who do you put at 13 then if he's at prop oh you can take your pick I thought um, Finucane was outstanding yeah. I thought he could do that again Tyson Frizzell can play prop yeah yeah you do you've got Tariq Sims if he's fit Wade Graham White Graham, I he believe can he do needs anything, six. Like, yeah, so. I still believe he should get his six jersey, especially like looking at this Queensland team here. I feel like he's the front runner. I don't think they're going to go back to Pierce. Mm. I'd like to see that. I think he deserves it. Pierce or uh, Graham. White Graham? Yeah, I'd love to see that. I think it's uh, yep, no doubt. Oh, right, well, last week's uh, last week's games. So Tigers beat the Rabbits fourteen nine. Little cheeky cheek came try to break mm. the rabbits went off a bit early with their field goal, didn't they? Yeah, it was. Uh, I hate to see teams play negative that way, especially with ten minutes left. Ten minutes, you're looking at five sets at least. So if you can put one repeat set back to back, you're looking at dominating six or seven sets. If you take the easy option, or not not the easy option, but the negative option, um, and get in front early, get in front. You take the one yep. point. You give them a kick on the halfway line and give them the chance to get the ball back from a 10-metre restart, a shady 10. Yeah, um, <laughs> a very shady 10, yes, indeed. Give them the chance to get the ball back on your 40 mm. instead of keeping them down there and just peppering them yep. and just make them break. You're giving them a chance. You've took one point and then give them a chance at a possible six. Worst case scenario for them, they're in shot straight away for a one point anyway. Yeah. It's, to me, it's a negative play. It's a, Yeah, it's not a match winner for me. And I, I get it. I guess it was a grind. It was 8-all at the time that they took it. and that There's not many tries being scored in the match. So, And the one that they <laughs> hit in was fairly soft, wasn't it, really? Cheekham found a, found a gap there and just hit it yeah. pretty hard and, yeah, took them by surprise. But that's the risk you take. Yeah. Fatigue, another, fatigue was already setting in and they took the one point. And, another big game on the weekend. Storm beat the Roosters. I've got a question for you about this yeah. match. Um, does Cameron and Smith get paid two salaries? One for the referees. He was referee <laughs> in that game himself. He got some calls that no one else in rugby league get. But the first one, and it was, yeah. So he has control. He does it in a different way. The first one that went against him, he used that. So he made a real, a real point about it within the first 20 minutes of the game. Yes, he did. And then from the, it was always going to come back. Oh, it was always going to loop spades. back around because in he would have spades. been digging with the referees the whole game. Hey, mate, are you going to are you going to back up that thing, or are you going to are you going to return the favour? You know, <laughs> he did even it though so he was well. in the wrong, it was it a genuine penalty. Me. And then he got away with just blue murder from there on. Mate, that's got a that's, good leg pull in, lifted him up, did the wheelbarrow with him. That didn't get penalised. <laughs> and as you can probably tell from my tone, he did cost me a massive multi. <laughs> so what thanks was you very on? little, Ken. What was you on for? Just the chooks head to head. Ah, uh, multi with what? Oh, other bets. Couple other, yeah. Couple yeah, other right. Bets. Any any uh, zeros on the end of the the hundreds? Not me, no. Oh, okay. big enough to upset me. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you are a tight ass. <laughs> Just tighter, with... tighter than a submarine door. Oh, mate. But I think um, I saw a, saw a post on Scotty Minto's Facebook actually oh, this yeah, week yeah. that I thought Sacramento. was pretty valid. Oh, Scotty. Yeah, he, um... We'll have to get him on. I think so. I might send out an invitation to Scotty. He's a great bloke. Go on. Yeah. And he had, a, he had a good point, actually. He said he has not been that confident in seeing a side go back-to-back since the Broncos did it. And he thinks that Sydney, when they get Friend and little Keery back, little Luke Keery, they're doing this, you know, they've lost by two points to the Storm. And um, with those with those key players back, they're, they're, they're a much more menacing unit. Mm. Keery, and that, that, that's what got Maloney into this mess in the first place, was that Keery was playing so well, he'd squeeze Jimmy out of the team. I just can't see anybody beating the Storm, but that's, I, I, I thought that last year. I thought that they would have gone back-to-back. I thought they would have been the first team since the Bronx to go back-to-back. Yep. But then 
the Roosters were just too good. Yeah, mate, between those two teams, it's a toss-up every time they play. Mm, I'm, I'm 100% with Minto. I, yeah. think, I think that the Roosters the Chooks are certainties. Wow. There you go. You heard it here first, guys. Go and lump on. <laughs> lump on the Roosters. <laughs> Thanks to Ben. Yep. Sorry about that. And you did also hear that he just lost a th- couple of <laughs> couple of multis on the weekend in the same breath. So uh, take <laughs> take That's, that yeah. advice as you will. Yeah. Maybe we should ask Cam Smith. Made the Knights, turned over the Broncos, 26-12. Yep. Again. To be expected. Just desperate times for the Broncos. Do you see them digging themselves out of this hole? Nope. What do they need? It can't be a new coach. Minto. Scotty, <laughs> get down there, help no, them No, what out, do they Scotty. need? I, look, yeah, I, I don't know. I think they're just in a changing of the guard. It's, mm. they, they've got a lot of young forwards. They've got... Um, but that should be a positive. Yeah, like but, you know, I believe the spine's the problem. And then you've got problem. Darius Boyd, and they've yeah. got, you know, so they, they have got spine issues. Um, Eels turned over the Raiders. This was a surprise to me, this one. 22-16. Yeah. Did you watch the game? No, I didn't see that one. Yeah, it was, I fell asleep halfway through it as well. It was pretty boring. Uh, 19-18 <laughs> to the Panthers over the Warriors. Yep, massive controversy. We've touched on that already. Yep. Jimmy um, Maloney steered him home and iced it. Put himself in, uh, is he a captain? For the New South Wales. I'm just thinking, sorry for digressing again, but I just believe <clears throat> what Boyd Cordner does is great. It's it's inspirational from a different level, but what Jimmy does and what he brings to that team, it's so infectious. It's infectious and you can see it around, the people around him. <laughs> like even you, you can't think about him without putting a smile oh, on your mate, face. I just know what he's going to do to Queensland. But anyway, the, no, I, I don't think he needs to be captain. No? No. I do. He is anyway. Oh, yeah, that's true. He's a little general. He does the job. Uh, you can't shut him up. Freddie couldn't even <laughs> shut him up. He didn't bother. No. Let him go. He's Let on the go. right track. He got him. Yeah. He got him. Uh, Bulldogs turned over the Sharks. This was a surprise That was on, a biggest surprise Sunday. than yes. Parramatta, I think. Parramatta have got a pretty good crew. But, yeah, the Bulldogs turned over the Sharks. I don't know how that happened. I didn't see it, and I'm glad I never. Yeah, wow. You got a soft spot for the Sharks. Oh, I tipped the Sharks by 22 on the tipping comp. I thought they were going to flog them. And, yeah, that, from all reports, they just didn't turn up. Right, let's have a look at the ladder. Storm, four points clear, uh, six points clear with yeah. the game in hand on the Rabbits. Yep, they've done it again. They lead They lead at halfway very often through the comp. Roosters still red hot favourites though. Right $3.30. Yep. You're with them, aren't you? No doubt. Yep, they'll get him. What's the Storm's advantage of finishing top? They get a home final? Not as much as it used to it, be. I it's think not, it's is same. it? No. So I think the top four are fairly well looked after, but there's yeah I guess that's the benefit is that they one plays full in that first round yeah. of the finals yeah. and and stays at home the whole time. I think, only if they win, then the next highest ranked side I think goes. But anyway, yeah. But then uh, Roosters they might get two bites at the cherry. I think yeah, they get okay. two home games. They're guaranteed two home finals. Uh, so finishing second is essentially as good as finishing first anyway because you get to play number three at home. Yeah, I think so. It's not really that good, is it? <laughs> it just depends on how it plays out. The, be- the best form team could be ranked eight these times. You know, it just depends on what teams on the paddock and what how they're running into the form. Coming injuries is going to play a big part as well. Because well, like you does. said, mate, yeah. you you're putting money on the Roosters there based on two injuries coming back. What if they don't come back? Mm. Or what if they come back out of shape and out of form? <laughs> we've seen that happen before. We've seen a few years now where some of these sides get it together late and they put a big charge on towards the finals. And Parramatta did it a number of years ago. And they went all the way to the grand final and lost to Melbourne. Mm. And that was one of the ones that was stripped from Melbourne. So oh. they almost got there from, from eight. So that impressed uh, a couple of my dear friends who are Eels fans. Right. Eels. I don't know. Must be tough supporting the Eels. <laughs> it's a tough it's gig, It's got isn't to be a tough isn't gig, it, seriously. <laughs> what do they do? Yeah. All right, let's go into this week's games then. So with the Origin being next week... There's only four games. Um, my sure team, the Dragons, yep. will take on the Storm at home in Sydney mm. on Thursday night. Yep. So I'm going to take be... the Dragons here. Yeah, it's a good time not? to get Melbourne. Yeah. That'll Especially be... if uh, rumours are true and Cameron Smith does step up last minute mm. for the Origin. He oh. can't do that. Oh, look at his face. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh well, <they'll... laughs> the NRL might consider it or the Rugby League because, um, yeah, they'll save cost on referee. They only need one. But also bring people through the gates. Oh, get them all in. Yeah, get Alfie back. <laughs> Slater looks fit. He's running the mic pretty well. Uh, Thurston. He, he's keeping up. Lockyer. No, Thursday's out. Oh, I think Thursday's a bit lazy. <laughs> he's had enough. 
<laughs> I'll tell you what. Imagine, imagine his medical bills later in life. Which one? Thurston. What? His body is going to be a mess. Just the, the stuff that he used to put himself through. Yeah, actually, Thursday was like that. He, he reminds me, to make a tennis analogy, with Wimbledon kicking off this week. And mm. we haven't touched on no. Ash Barty, well, yeah. number one. No, we, we'll, we'll get into that. I'll tell you what. But, yeah, the tennis analogy I was going to make was um, Thurston has punched above his weight. And Rafael Nadal, yeah. they just punish their bodies, and those boys. Just they, don't, they don't winners. know anything else. No. They don't know anything else. No self-respect for their own body. No, no disregard. It's just... just it's it's yep. a tool basically. 100%. It's a it's a tool to win. Yep. And they'll all cost. First, I've never seen a player put himself in the right position so often. Like he just keeps following through mm. and doing what he has to do every match. And it was through will. It yep. wasn't it wasn't through yeah. uh, any kind of foresight. It was all through will and determination. <laughs> a little foresight. Well, no, I don't believe so. <laughs> I believe he's always up every now and again. It was all through will. All right. All three anyway, will. Yeah. Ash Barty, go Ash on. Barty. Oh, on, well, your little, on your little tangent. Yeah, well, you did ask. Tennis. So tennis. Go on. I told yeah. you he likes sports that nobody cares about. One of the shit sports. Go on, but let's get into it. This, is, this country was built on tennis. Davis Cup. But anyway, don't worry about that. <laughs> you just showing you, showing that you've come over on one of the ships. But anyway. Oh, go on. <laughs> We're treading murky waters here with racism. and. <laughs> oh, not really. Go on. Go on. That's just what happened. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Well, I didn't. Can't argue with the facts. Well, I didn't. I How'd flew in Did on you? a plane. Oh, really? As per normal people, you idiot. But you were summons. You got kicked out, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. You did. Yeah. So anyway. Oh, yeah, no, Ash Barty. <laughs> back to where it is. Ash Barty. Ash Barty. Where's she from? I think she's a Brisbane girl. She's, um, yeah. But yeah, so I think she's, uh, speaking of morals, throw Ash Barty into the Roosters because I think she'll take Wimbledon. No worries at all. There you go. Multi. Ash yep. Barty multi. With yeah. Roosters for the for the, for the title. Yeah. What's what's a, I suppose a key characteristic of a an elite tennis player. So not just somebody yeah. that comes out and wins a couple of Grand Slams. That's amazing. Yep. Somebody that stays there time after time after time. Federer, mm. Nadal. Mm. Yep. What's a, a good personality trait for those guys? So to draw an analogy to rugby league, you'd probably say resilience would be. Uh, forthright for a, a football player yep. to keep going through all the negative to, through the bloody challenges and tribulations that come along the way mm. with tennis, golf, those kinds of things, it seems to be a mental a mental game like there's got to be a lot of focus on mm. I don't know, what, how could you explain that? Mm. I probably wouldn't put tennis and golf in the same sort of athletic department but yeah i think um the the guys in the in the tennis that have been successful over long periods and sustained periods have been able to manage that because let's let's not forget the the men's side of the game they they play five sets best of five sets at the grand slams and that's where the majority of the points are um it's heavily weighted towards grand slams throughout the year so all the other tournaments add up to a little bit the grand slams if you win a couple of grand slams you'll find yourself in the top 10 even if you win one you'll be well on your way so I think what they do very well is that they prepare mentally and physically for those events and they are able to manage it because, you know, playing for five hours and then having to back up, you have one day's rest and then have to back up again. So the recovery... And so periodization would be a huge part of their life. That yeah. They would use, <clears throat> they would set pins in the calendar at certain points and then that's the where they've got to be peaking at that particular time yep so use the rest of as a springboard to kind of climb 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 but you must be peaking at this time there's no point peaking to win a competition six weeks out if you're going to be shattered by the time you get to the grand slam yep is that right yeah it is yeah and i think andre i guess he sort of um he made a really big comeback after all the, the trouble that he went through with his life and I read his book, his, his book Open, and it was a fantastic read. And the, the work that that guy put in, he, he was the first one to really have a, a full-time physical trainer to mm. get him back on track, and um, that was what they did. They worked very hard to... It was almost like a Rocky Balboa sort of yeah. set up. You know, they really peaked at the right times. And Something I'm really interested in, I think um, we might get somebody on to just take us through athletic performance and how you kind of build for stuff, how you prepare 12 months away from an event if, if that's even possible yeah um, I think some analysis on that you know people listening would probably enjoy that yeah because um, it's something we don't get to see that the guys at the elite level of their sports it's not something that they share willingly because they see it as an advantage that they have over the other competitors they're yeah, not going to just share their, their secrets no um, but not I think, until they've retired yeah and even then you know who, who are they really talking to then and, yeah. and, and what are they promoting then yeah 
themselves. Yes. That's what Andre did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll reach out to, uh, needs to be a bona fide uh, professional. Um, yeah. We'll see what we can do. I think we'll get somebody on in the next few weeks for that. I think it's a good point. Mm. Yeah, it carries across, uh, yeah, like you said, a number of sports. It's a, it's, a, it's a mental and physical preparation and, yeah, it's a, it's not easy to win seven matches in 14 days. No, well, one thing I used to talk to <clears throat> the kids about and something I learned from a, a guy I've got a lot of respect for in health and fitness was arousal levels. Um, mm. So, for example, going into a big match or a big fight, um, some people are different. Some people need high arousal levels. Mm -hmm. Some people need low. So if you're naturally um, highly aroused all the time, you need... Uh, your calming music, your acoustic music, that's the stuff you need to be listening to. Mm. You don't need anything else. You just need to bring yourself down to stop yourself burning nervous energy. And then as you get out, the adrenaline will take over. The other way around, the the, the lower arousal levels was... Um, I'm really uncomfortable with how often you've said uh, arousal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need... So with the... <laughs> <laughs> With the low arousal levels, you needed your pump up music, your slap on the head from the coach. Uh, that you needed to be brought up yep. in order to, um, to to do your job. Yep. Now, when you correlate those to positions, your props uh, were the ones that you needed to be pumping up. They okay. were the ones, and and it then went not just personal but specific to the position that they were about to play and what they were asked to do. Oh, no, right, yeah. So, mm. if you was being uh, hyped up and, and pumped up. That would you would tend to be a prop or a strike center, an energetic player. Yep. If you was a decision maker, you would be on the the acoustic uh, level or the, the slow end of the scale. You're yeah, Marvin so Gaye and <laughs> let's get it on. <laughs> Come on, I think uh, I think just to draw a tennis analogy there, I think uh, Leighton Hewitt used to yep. listen to Rocky Balboa, the Eye of the Tiger type stuff, mm -hmm. and I would imagine Federer listens to Andreas Pacelli. Yeah, or even the maybe the podcast. <laughs> Shady 10? Yes, the NRL noise. Roger would be a fan. Get in there, Rog. <laughs> we, might, we might reach out. Tell you what I'll do. See if I'll tell Roger you what I'm going to do. I'm going to set I'm gonna set a challenge here. All right. If you, if you can get a video message to us from Roger Federer by Christmas time this year, right. we'll do something for you. <laughs> Excellent. You can name... You can name a forfeit for me. If you can bring a video message to the show from Roger Federer by Christmas time, you get to choose my forfeit for Christmas, for Boxing Day. Your forfeit? What do you mean by that? You can choose a forfeit, whether it's run through the town hall naked or whatever oh, you choose. Yeah, you so you get all, to put a punishment like a, in place like for me. It's sort of a challenge that we're talking here. So a forfeit. A forfeit. Okay. So what How's they, that sound? Is that what they call it? Yeah. If you fail, mm. I choose yours. Oh, it sounds easy enough. Good deal for me. Yeah, Roger's accessible. I, think. <laughs> I should be able to get a hold of him. It shouldn't be too hard. There we go, folks. Deal done. Deal ben done. will get us a message by uh, video message. Sorry, not just a message, a video message from Roger Federer by Christmas time. If not, you might see him in the Fitzroy swimming across. Well, it'll be a quick swim. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you make it halfway. Yeah. Okay, we'll see you next week. You've got no friends. So there we have it again another episode down thank you very much for joining us it's been an absolute pleasure and we look forward to growing this podcast with you if you enjoyed this episode there's plenty more in the library on itunes check us out on facebook and instagram under the handle at the nrl noise don't forget to use the past the pod hashtag to your friends and enemies alike please subscribe on itunes and spotify or wherever you get your podcast feed we'll see you next week bye